Hi and welcome to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. For the free tutorial today, I've had another request for a chunky pendant. So chunky is something that I do well. We are going to be working with this beaded design. It's got movement, it's got loads of gemstones and it's a lot of fun to create. Not only that, it's actually quite simple. Let's head down to the board, take a closer look and then we'll make it together. So here's our chunky beaded pendant. This one I've made with some beautiful Mookite Jasper from Western Australia. And these are six millimeter beads. So it's nice and chunky. There's loads of movement in the design. And I'll be using one of these drilled rings. Now this is in a gold hammered colorway and it measures 42 millimeters across, which is about an inch and somewhere between a half and three quarters. Not very good at that kind of measurement. So let's take a look at some of the the other materials that we'll need for this project today. I've got some beautiful blue tiger's eye beads, six millimeter. And to recreate this design exactly, I'm going to need 25 of those. And that's at that six millimeter size. If you want to put them side by side, as I have done here, that is exactly how many you will need. However, the choice as ever is yours. You could use smaller or larger beads. Smaller beads will require a greater number. Larger beads, obviously slightly fewer, but it will play with where Whereabouts everything sits on the design. So the ring I'm using is a gold hammered look ring and it's a 42 millimeter ring with a little drill hole up at the top there which will accept a one millimeter 18 gauge wire through that gap. Now if the prospect of 70 inches 180 centimetres of 0 0.6 millimetre 24 gauge wire is a little bit much for you, then do feel free to break that down into two foot or 24 inch 60 centimetre sections. Because we're going to be wrapping four times between each bead, it gives us the option to wrap twice, press down after we've cut the wire and then start a new piece of wire wrap around twice, press down nice and neatly, and then scooch those two parts together. In order to demonstrate effectively, I'm working with a shorter length of wire, but again, it's 0.6 millimeter, 24 gauge. What we're going to do is to start off, I like to start off next to the little drill hole in that ring, and I'm going to put about an inch and a half of wire just over the top, heading inwards. So over the top, going towards the centre of that drilled ring. I'm going to make four wraps, four visible wraps. So one is included already. There's the second, there's the third, and there's the fourth over the top. Now I'm just going to bring that across the back, give it a little gentle squish by hand before I just turn that wire over, turn the frame over rather, Trim away that last little bit and I'm trimming that quite close to the edge. That's fine for the start point. I'm just going to softly press that down. Let's get the scrap out of the way. Flip that back over to the upper side. Now if I scooch that around, what I want it to do is to sit right next to that little drill hole up at the top there. When I'm happy with the placement and it doesn't want to be crossing over because we will need access to that drill hole, Make sure that that set of bands are really nice and tidy and tight, all sitting side by side before you give them a hearty squish. Now, when you're pressing down on wire on top of wire, which I always say not to do, make sure that that tail of wire is coming away neatly. And in that way, you won't shatter it because you're not putting any pressure on the vulnerable part, which is this section coming away. So I'm going to add in my first bead. I've got around about an 18 inch length here just to demonstrate with. So let's pop that down onto the outside of that hammered gold ring. And as you start to add more and more wraps, this will definitely become less mobile. So for the time being, just hold that in position and then draw the tail of wire down behind the bead. Now what I'm doing is I'm pushing up with my finger to hold the bead on the outside of that hammered ring. We just want that to sit still. So when the wire, the finer gauge wire comes neatly down underneath the ring, going to hold that in position, draw the wire all the way through. Now this demonstration piece I have done with a single 70 inch length, that's approximately 180 centimetres. 
and it is indeed possible but you might be a little bit overawed by that and that's absolutely fine you can just kind of do a couple of rotations and then add more wire so what I'm going to do now is wrap another four times around the ring so the finer wire has come through the bead underneath the outside of that hammered ring and what we're going to do is put some tension into it and wrap four times keeping those bands really nice and neat and tidy together, finishing with the wire coming straight and away. So scooch those up until they're nice and neat and tidy. The more wraps and beads that you add, the less likely things are to move around. So do try to keep that nice and tidy. Now you'll see the vulnerable point of my wire is just here. So I'm making sure that that's nice and flat before I come in with a squish. You can also make sure that those bands are nice and neat and tidy. Now I'm not pressing down so hard that I shatter the wire, but I'm pressing down firmly enough to ensure that that remains neatly. So I'm going to add one more in the same way. And again, these are six millimeter beads. If you recreate the project exactly, I used 25. There are 21 that go round the outside and then four that go on the little hanging bar. Bring that bead down into position. Make sure that you're holding that bead whilst you take the tail of wire around and underneath. Once you've got that nice sharp bend through and a word of warning, Tiger's Eye and this beautiful Mookite Jasper are both really good, nice beads to work with when they're round polished like this. Certain beads will not enjoy the pressure that I'm putting through them. So try to avoid anything that's too shattery or delicate. I certainly wouldn't do this with uh, something like perhaps fluorite and I definitely wouldn't do it with kyanite. So I'm going to draw the wire up through the centre again and wrap four times. And I am putting a little bit of pressure on it, hence the need for a good, strong gemstone. Quartz is a really great place to start. There's Joey saying hi. Scooch those four wraps up nice and neatly and then give that a squish. Sorry about that, Joey, just having a little more to say than usual. So I'm going to bring in one more bead for the moment. Let's allow that to slide down. I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, chatoyancy in these blue tigers eye are gorgeous. Allow that to zip line down into position. And what I'm going to do now for you is to show you how to add on another section of wire if the prospect of 70 inches is too much for you. So let's hold that bead nice and still. Draw that wire across the back. Wrap once and then twice. Draw it over the back. Now, instead of taking the tail of wire all the way to the end, what we're going to do here is allow that to lift back up slightly and cut it halfway across the back of that ring. So you can see you've got a sticky uppy bit. Give that a little bit of a squish. And that just sits halfway across the back of that ring. Now we can add on some more wire. So we need to remember that our wire has to go over the top with the tail end going into the middle. We only need a tiny bit this time because we're looking to generate two visible wraps. So let's take that wire all the way around once. There's the second time. So it's not very neat, not very tight. We need to just scooch those together for a second, flip it over to the rear of the design, trim that wire halfway across the back. You might just need to lift it up pop that away. What we're going to do is to press that wire down firmly, flip back to the front of the design and you can see we've got two and two bars of wire to work with. So if you push those together really nice and tidy, give them a bit of a squish with your flat facing pliers. Once you start adding more and more beads as you move around that circular ring form, you won't be able to see much movement in there. So let's add one more and see how that looks. As I said to you earlier, the demonstration piece I have here with the Mookite Jasper, I just used one great big long length. For me, just using as few lengths of wire as possible will always create safer, longer lasting jewellery. So if you're unable to do that, then this is your option. So hold those two twos wraps together hold your bead in position and continue as you were before. So we'll go around once, twice, three times and a fourth time. Give that a squish up, tidy everything together. And then when you start getting more stability 
that will just close up a little bit. Now, I don't know if you can see the difference between the two of these designs, but these are a little bit more gappy than my Mookite ones. So if you prefer, you can absolutely scooch those up together so you get that fully beaded look the sooner you do that when you start wrapping the better now that one's a little bit naughty it won't move so i'm just going to coerce it to move over push that into position and in that way you'll be able to have that racked stacked and packed design the chunky beaded pendant design let's just push those two twos together and give it a quick squish and by the time you get all the way around, you'll barely even notice any of those joins. But you can't go all the way around with big gaps and then decide to push the wires over because every time you do that little band of four, you do get more and more stability. So decide early on if you want to have them gapped apart as they were a second ago, like this or if you want them all stacked up together. So you need to kind of decide that early on. One of the reasons I like a design like this is if you don't have 25 beads in that six millimeter, then you can extend your project a little bit by just opening things out. It is much harder to make those joins appear smooth when you're doing that technique though. So consider using the longer piece of wire. One thing I will say is that it takes about three inches of wire for each of these little stations, for each of the beads. So if you wanted to do the mathematics, count out your beads and then work out how much less wire you'll need if you spread them apart, you can save yourself a little bit of aggravation. So I've continued wrapping all the way around with my blue tiger's eye using that really long length of wire. I think it looks really attractive as it is and you could just go for a pinch bell in that drill hole if you wanted to. However, I want to add spirals and movement to everything. So let's finish off our chunky beaded pendant with an extra piece of that one millimeter or 18 gauge wire. So I have my slightly separated beads on this particular ring. As I said to you before, if you absolutely stack them together, you'll need 25 six millimetres. And I've used slightly fewer on this piece. I do love that blue tiger's eye though. What you will notice is that I have got a little aperture available. I haven't covered up that drill hole in the centre. Now we're going to be working with a 10 or 11 inch length of one millimetre 18 gauge wire. And I'm just going to make sure that that's nice and warm and receptive to being used nice and smooth and ready to go now you can use your round nose pliers or you can use the smallest section of your bail makers and what we're going to do is to start off by creating almost a complete round form like so and then we're going to switch over to using our flat pliers in this case my bent chain nose pliers and generate a spiral. Now on my Mookite Jasper piece, I have used quite a lot of spirals going round. I think for this piece, because I'm mixing my metals, I'll just go for three turns of the wire. So, so far we have got one, two, and now we're going to go for a third attack. So I'm showing you a slightly different version of rotating that wire today because I've hurt my wrist. <laughs> there we go. We've got three rotations going around the center section there. And what we're then going to do is to turn away that wire at 90 degrees from that little flat disc that we've created. I'm going to give it a little bit of a squish to make sure it's nice and strong. Just smoothing that wire through one more time. Now you could obviously add spacer beads to this if you desire, but I'm just going to thread on three of my beautiful blue tiger's eye beads slide that down into position. Now what we're going to do is just sit that over the top of the design and see how that looks. I don't need to make that spiral bigger, that sits exactly where I want it to do. So what I need to do now is to hold the spiral flat to the desk and then make a right angle bend going away from me. So what I'm doing is I'm using my pliers as a guide over the top if I turn that sideways, push the wire away, you'll see that there's a nice gap at the top there. It's not a vast gap, but what that enables us to do is to push that wire through the drill hole in the round ring that we're working with today. Push that all the way back until it sits into position. So this is where a little bit of movement occurs and I really enjoy that in jewellery. So what we're going to do now is extra warm this next section of wire because we're going to ask it to do something 
a little bit out of its comfort zone. So make sure that that's nice and warm. Technical phrase for you now, make sure it's nice and floopy. And I'm just drawing that little spiral drop section over to one side as I push that down and draw it all the way through the middle. Now it needs to be nice and tight to that ring shape before drawing back up and away. So there is an element of movement here, but everything is quite tight because you don't want excessive movement in a piece like this, lest you wear that wire. What we do need to have happen is for the wire that comes up through those beads, down through the hole, underneath and back away in the same direction, those two little sections should be side by side, not crossing over. So let's very, very softly make sure that we don't hurt those beads, give that a little bit of a squish. Now that we know that they are doing what we want to, we can add our final bead. Ah, the worst part of my day is putting beads on things. <laughs> let's slide that down. It's not the worst part of my day. It's just the bit I find trickiest. There we go. So I finished off my ring of beads with a central one above that access drill hole. And now we're just going to go for a fancy wrapped loop up at the top. And again, you can vary how much space there is between those beads. Every time you make this design, you can make it a little bit different. You can even go for alternative beads and just play around with that design aesthetic to your heart's content. So I'm going to make an oversized bale as always. So I'm going to grip up at the top I might just turn that around in the opposite direction and bring that wire forwards, leaving myself a little bit of a gap. Let's grab those bail makers back in. Honestly, one of my favourite tools, along with chain nose pliers that are bent. And let's make an oversized loop. Let's go for number five on those bail makers. Create that round form. Draw the tail all the way around. Before you go anywhere, give that a little bit of a strengthen. So I tend to just open and close my pliers on top there just to make sure that that stays in shape. Now we're working with a one millimeter 18 gauge wire. So obviously it's not the strongest of wires in the world. If someone was to uh, mount a couple of tons of bricks off the bottom, that would probably pull out of shape. But let's try not to do that with jewelry. Hold across that rounded form and take the tail around. Have to lift it slightly, otherwise I will hit the camera. So I'm going to go for three visible wraps. That's what I can see fit into the space that I've left above that last bead. Give that a bit of a squish. If you use the curved side against the bead, you're less likely to scratch that bead. So let's make sure that that's nice and tidy and straight. And what I'm going to do to add just a little bit of drama to the piece and also to cover up the bit where those the ring and the main heavy wire sort of fit together, I want to cover that up. So I'm going to just draw that wire around that central bead, trim away to just over an inch. I've got a little bit of wire left to play with for later. And what we're going to do is to create another spiral over the top of that connection point. Now, because I want this to be nice and tight, a really small spiral, I'm going to use my standard round nose pliers now to create that spiral form. And what we're going to do is just exactly the same as we did before, but with a smaller aperture in the center. So rotate that around again. Forgive me for holding the wire a bit funny today. I have very much hurt my wrist and it's not doing what I want it to, which is always good and fun. So bring that spiral to sit over the surface before pressing it down into the gap. And you can play around with how that looks to your heart's content. I just think it's quite nice to have something just hiding that little mechanical section so it looks like your drops coming out of nowhere. You can obviously take a little bit more time than I have to get that loop straight at the top. But side by side, there are your chunky beaded pendants. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed the chunky beaded pendant design with me today. My name is Gem. This is the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. If you like the content, don't forget to leave a like, comment. You can always leave requests for me if you'd like to. Sharing a video is very, very definitely caring. And hit subscribe if you'd like to see new content every Tuesday. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.